What's up, everybody? Welcome back. We're now going to be moving on to the next section. And in this section, we're going to be talking about leasing. So to begin, let's start off with a very general example. Let's say that you own a company and you want to use a certain asset. Let's say you want to use a car. And in order to gain access to the use of that car, you have two options. The first option is you could straight up buy the car. So you take the car, you buy it, now you own it, and now you can use it for your business. Second option, you can rent the asset from someone else who owns it, and then you can use it. And in this section, we're not gonna be really using the word rent. Instead, we're gonna be using the word lease. They both mean the same thing. So you're gonna lease the asset from someone who already owns it. Now, the person that you are leasing it from, the person who owns the asset, they're called the leaseor. And then you, the person who is renting the asset, is called the leasee. So you rent the asset from someone who owns it, and now you have access to the use of the asset for a certain period of time. And then once you're done, you're going to return it to that owner. So which option should you take? Should you buy the asset or should you lease it? And that's what this section is going to be about. We're going to get into specifics into answering that question of which option to take, whether we should buy an asset or lease it. Now, when you first hear that question, you would think intuitively that it's probably better to buy assets, better to own assets, build up your asset base, and then lease it out to other people. But unfortunately, it's a little bit more complex than that. There's a lot more that goes into that question, and there's advantages and disadvantages to both methods. And not only that, but what are advantages and disadvantages in one scenario can be the opposite in another scenario. Now, there are a bunch of differences between buying an asset and leasing one. For example, one of the differences is if you buy an asset, you're responsible for the maintenance of that asset, and usually if you lease an asset, you're not responsible for the maintenance. If something breaks down, you tell the owner of that asset and then they have to fix it. But one of the biggest differences is the financial statement effects of both of these options. So when you buy an asset, that asset has to go on your balance sheet, which makes sense. But when you lease an asset, that asset is not going to be on your balance sheet because you don't really own it. And there's actually a lot of exceptions to that happening, but we're going to go over the exceptions in more detail in future videos. But for now, let's just assume if you're leasing an asset, it doesn't go on your balance sheet. So let's show what's going on visually. So I drew this balance sheet here. So we have the assets on the left side of the balance sheet. And then we have the debt or the liabilities and the equity on the right side of the balance sheet. So again, looking at these options, intuitively, you would think that you want to buy assets because the asset ends up going on your balance sheet. And don't you want to fill up that asset side of the balance sheet? That means your company is growing, right? Well, again, it's very case dependent. There's a lot that goes into that question. So... Let's go back to our example. Let's say that you own a company that leases a bunch of cars. So you buy cars and then you lease them to other people. So the left side of your balance sheet, the assets are going to be mostly cars. Those are the assets that are going to be making you income. So you're buying cars and then you're leasing them to other people. Well, as you know, cars depreciate in value. They go down in value. So when investors look at your company and they look at your balance sheet, they might not like that you have a bunch of assets that are depreciating in value. However, they might like the cash flow or the income that you're making from leasing the cars. Maybe you're getting a lot of demand for the cars in terms of people who want to rent them out and investors may like that. So it depends which one they value more. Not only that, but when you have certain assets, you can depreciate them on your taxes. You can claim CCA on them, and that reduces your taxes. So that's actually another benefit of buying an asset, is you get that CCA 
tax shield. And that's something that you don't get when you are leasing. However, with the CCA tax shield, again, that can be case dependent because maybe your company is in a lower tax bracket. So that CCA tax shield is not as effective as if your company was in a higher tax bracket. So as you can see, there's a lot that goes into consideration when you're thinking about whether to buy or lease an asset. Sometimes it might be more worth it for you to just lease the asset than to own it, especially if it's an asset that is depreciating in value, whether that's cars, but it's not just limited to cars, it could be anything. Perhaps it's a machine that your business needs, but it depreciates in value over time. You may want to keep that off your balance sheet and then lease it for a certain period of time instead. But then again, when you're leasing it, you're not getting some of the benefits of buying it, such as the CCA tax shield. So let's switch it up a bit now. Let's say instead of cars, your primary asset that you are buying is real estate. So now it switches up a little bit. What do you want to do? Do you want to buy real estate or do you want to lease real estate? Well, it depends. Usually real estate is going up in value because they can't make any more land. So the supply is limited. So you may think that buying an asset that's going to appreciate in value is the right thing to do. However, it may also go down. There may be an unstable market and there may be a chance of that asset going down if you buy it. So then in that sort of market, it may be better for you to lease it or to rent it. Another thing is that real estate is a lot more expensive than cars. So when companies are buying real estate, usually they are taking on some additional debt to buy that real estate. And that's fine, you're increasing the assets of your balance sheet, you're increasing that left side, but you're also increasing the debt. And the more debt you have on a balance sheet, the more unhealthy, quote unquote, it is. And investors may not like that either. So lots of questions, lots of things to consider when you're debating the option of buying versus leasing. And this video, I kept very general just to introduce you to this section. But as this section moves along, in the next few videos, we're going to get a lot more technical. We're going to get a lot more specific. And we're going to start getting a lot more of a clear answer of whether we should buy an asset or lease it in certain scenarios. Now, in the next video, what we're going to do is we're going to get into a lot more detail about this part here, about talking about leases. And we're going to talk about the two major types of leases, an operating lease and a capital lease and their different implications. Also, if you remember, I mentioned that when you lease an asset, it usually doesn't go on the balance sheet, but I said that there are certain exceptions and we are going to cover those exceptions in the next video as well. Yo, what's up guys? Thanks for checking out my channel. Hopefully you got some value from the video you just watched. If you did get some value, big favor to ask you, please like this video and subscribe to the channel. Any questions, any recommendations on things you'd like to see, please leave it in the comments section. Also check out the description box below for links to material and content related to the video you just watched. Peace out.